everyone. Welcome back to Book Club Preview. I'm Michael, and today we're looking at The Body in the Library, Chapter 9 and 10, and in this we get straight to the point. So we got Miss Bantry, we got Miss Marple, and Sir Henry talking with Mark, uh, was it Gaskell, and Mrs. Jefferson. And this is for the first time they just start sharing, and they're like, hey, we didn't really like Ruby. There was really nothing we could do though. She was kind of a gold digger, but man, the old man, Mr. Jefferson, he wanted to adopt her and it was too late to change it. Like we didn't realize what was happening. Um, let's see, Mrs. Jefferson was doing tennis all the time and uh, Mark was doing other things. So probably Mr. Jefferson felt lonely and this is how um, Ruby kind of got in. Um, the fact that Mrs. Jefferson has been playing tennis a lot, Miss Marple notices a little bit towards uh, later on, uh, but that's something in the chapter. After they really just talk and Mark and um, Mrs. Jefferson are just really honest and sharing, we realize that, okay, they probably didn't do it, but um, at least we're getting to some truth. like. There's no nothing hidden um, that they're really sharing so far, right? Um, then we see this guy named Hugo come in, and Hugo is kind of Mrs. Jefferson's boyfriend. They're not really dating, they're not really romantic, but Mr. Hugo really wants to marry Mrs. Jefferson, but she maybe doesn't feel free yet because of the father-in-law, Mr. Jefferson. But Hugo comes whenever she needs help, and so he comes, and she leaves and Mark ends up leaving too. Then uh, Peter comes and Peter's kind of talking like, oh, Sir Henry, I heard you're a detective too. You're some big shot. Wow, this is amazing. But Peter says, look, I have a souvenir. And he has a fingernail clipping from Ruby. And they learn that uh, Ruby had, had ripped one of her fingernails and that's why she had clipped all her fingernails um, when they found her dead body, which they thought was odd because usually that kind of girl has long fingernails. So that kind of solved one point of the mystery. And then they ask, um, do you think that in her bedroom they found other clippings of the fingernails? So maybe they're not in the bedroom. Um, later on, we're going to see that they're in a burnt car. Maybe we find them in the burnt car. So then we start to piece some things together. We don't know yet though, but um, Mrs. Marple and Sir Henry say, oh, let's see if we can find where the other fingernail clippings are. Peter goes away, Josie comes, and Josie um, is like, oh my goodness, isn't this terrible? And then he's kind of ask her straight, hey, did you know that Mr. Jefferson was thinking about adopting Ruby? She's like, oh, yes I did, but come on, everyone needs a little bit of luck now. I wasn't going to stop it if this guy wanted to give her money. Okay. And then they continue on and they get some information that in the burnt out car there was a dead body and that was the second murder. And Mrs. Marble said, I'm not too surprised. And Sir Henry's like, are, are you serious? You, you thought this was going to happen? She's like, yeah, I, I really thought it was going to happen. And then he said, you, you don't think it's going to happen again, do you? And she says, yeah, actually, I, I think there's going to be more. They say, you don't know who the next victim is, do you? And she says, yeah, actually, I think I do. And that ends chapter 9. So chapter 10, pretty quick. Uh, there's this guy um, who's a laborer. He's driving down the road. He sees a glow out in the quarry. He's like, hmm, that's interesting. What's that glow? Well, I don't know. And he continues on. But later, he's talking to one of the inspectors and he's asking about a missing car and missing girl, things like that. And he's like, well, I don't know, but I did see a fire in the quarry. I did see a glow. Maybe some people were doing some things out there. So the inspector goes out there and he finds the burnt out car. In the burnt out car, there's a burnt body in there and it's so burnt, we can't even tell if it's a boy or a girl, but looking at, there's one foot and one shoe that survived the fire and it looks like a girl shoe. So they say, yeah, this is probably the missing girl, Pamela Reeves. <sighs> She's been found. 
and she's about 16 years old. And so they do some investigating, grabbing some things, trying to find anything, any clues that they can. Well, now the inspector needs to talk to uh, Superintendent Harper, I believe it is, and say, hey, can you go talk to the parents? So he goes to Brayside. This is the, the community where the parents live. And they just kind of talk to the parents and say, hey. Um, and the mom is like, oh, you found her. You found you found my daughter. Uh, but uh, Professor Har or um, Mr. Harper, Superintendent Harper is like, ooh. And then she starts crying because she knows it's bad news. Mr. Reeves is like, what happened? He tells her, um, you know, we found her dead body. It's probably her. Can you tell us what happened? And we don't know too much, but Pamela left to go to some girls guide meeting, or I guess maybe they guide around some tourists or something. She was planning to go to this town and do some shopping and then come home. It was normal, nothing out of the ordinary. And Inspector Harper asked a few more questions, but man, there's nothing out of the ordinary. And in fact, Pamela was a really sweet, innocent girl. Like she wasn't kind of like a tricky, wild girl or anything. She was just pure hearted, loved to help, loved to obey mom and dad, and was actually still a very childish, very pure for her age. And so at the end of this chapter, um, Inspector Harper says, hey, let me take the dad um, to go look at the body. Mom, you think of anything you can think of that might give us a hint to who this guy is or who this girl is, we're gonna find the killer. And Mr. Our Inspector Harper sees a picture of Pamela and she just looks like the sweet innocent girl and he says man this was an innocent that got killed I'm gonna do whatever it takes to find the murderer and that leaves us with some vocabulary sleuth a sleuth is like a detective investigator or investigating we can say sleuthing um, desultory is like aimless unfocused no purpose no vision insepid is like flavorless tasteless, um, nothing really there, lacking value. Um, mer Let's see if I can pronounce this. Um, meriticulous. Meriticulous is false, looking attractive, but actually having nothing in me. It could be like shallow also. Like uh, it looks really good, but there's not a lot of depth. Alias is a nickname. Foul play is another word for like a crime or doing something bad. Um, sol sol stolidly, okay, stolid is strong, dependable, and L-Y is describing. And so I think it's the father is, tell us, inspector, what happened to our daughter? Okay, he, inside there's some emotion, but he's, he's standing strong and dependable. The last one I think here is precocious. Precocious is like mature, meaning um, Pamela wasn't precocious. She's 16 years old. Maybe she's becoming like an adult, but she wasn't becoming witty or clever or super smart. She was just a sweet little girl. She's 16, but inside she was still sweet. So precocious is like mature, but she was not. Oh, sorry, last one. Distraught. Distraught means troubled, bothered. Um, there's some disruption in your heart or in your mind. That leaves us with our discussion question. Do you have any good souvenirs? Um, the boy, Peter, has a box and inside this match box is a souvenir, a clipping of the murdered woman's fingernail. And he also has like a bag and in the bag, there's a little bit of leather, which is the shoelace of, um, oh, I can't remember his name. What is his name, 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 names? My name list, uh, George Barlett. <laughs> so he has the shoelace of George Barlett. He said, he was the last person to see her alive. Maybe he did it. So he has these good souvenirs, these special souvenirs. Now, you probably don't have anything from a murdered person but do you have some treasure? It's probably worthless. It's not important to anyone else, but for some reason, you keep it and it's special to you. Maybe your mom or dad even want you to throw it away, but it's like, oh, it's this special treasure 
that I found and I want to keep it. Some souvenir, some memory, some token to remember, uh, some item that has a strong memory connected to it. That's a souvenir. And of course, please make your own discussion question. That is all the time that we have for today. But thank you so much for joining me for this episode of Book Club Preview. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.